Carrying on Kentucky news, I wanted to read some um, Gatewood Gabarus quotes here in the Leo Weekly, which uh, was actually one of the few media groups that actually covered Gatewood Gabarus death. The Louisville Cardinal did not think Gatewood was an important person to even mention him dying. They covered his uh, election. They said he was going to give $5,000 to every college student. He had a more progressive agenda. He had more items on his policy, on his agenda for all of us. Uh, he was a Huey Long of Kentucky. And he was a new dealer. He was a hippie. So the Kentucky really lost a, a big fine with Gatewood Galbraith. Now who's going to speak truth to power? Yeah, the media wants to mock everybody that speaks the truth. Anybody that speaks the truth, you want to treat him like a fucking asshole. Media, Louisville Media, Jake Payne and the Kerr Journal. You know who you are. You want to make Gatewood look like an asshole when he was for homosexual rights, when he was for stopping poverty and against the police brutality and the prison industrial complex and the military industrial complex. In fact, he's got a... Uh, he basically says, in one of his quotes that Gatewood always have is, for all you petrical... Well, actually, he says, fuck all these people. He's got... I got your karma right here. Right? But basically, um, the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite bastards, go fuck yourself. Petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite, bastards, a bunch of SOBs, you fucking piece of shits, fuck you. The owners of society, that's who Gatewood Gabbard was against. Let's see, Gatewood Gabbard, I've also smoked marijuana approximately 25,000 times to investigate whether it is possible to kill oneself by its, ye by its use, and I'm happy to report that it's not. <laughs> okay, so, so Gatewood's tried it over 25,000 times. And uh, he reported that it's not possible to kill oneself by its use. Ronald Reagan and George Bush aren't conservatives. They're aliens. Uh, it's a gateway gallery. I don't know if there is a hell or not, but if there is, I take some comfort in knowing that certain folks are going to be buried hotter and deeper than I am, with William Jefferson Clinton being one of them. <laughs> so Gateway did not like Clinton. He was against both of the political parties. But look at his policies. He's a progressive. Gatewood Gabbard is a progressive, and he was a progressive, and he will always be a progressive. He tried to kowtow to the Tea Party a little bit when they when they came into town, um, and he actually tricked me, and I wish he would have embraced more of his uh, uh, liberal stances. He cares about poor people in health care and education. He's always cared about poor people in health care and education. So... Let's see, another quote, prove me wrong when I say that cannabis is the most beneficial medicine known to mankind in the treatment of stress, glaucoma, anorexia, nausea, migraine, headaches, asthma, and epilepsy. Prove me wrong. So, cannabis is the most beneficial medicine known to mankind in the treatment of stress, glaucoma, anorexia, nausea, migraine, headaches, asthma, and epilepsy. In the 1991 speech to the Kentucky Press Association. If I had a million dollars to run on the next time, you would see me standing on the corners with a smile and a wave for everyone. Uh, as far as having to pee in a cup to hold a job, I look to the words of General George Patton. Screw you, Nazis. In a stump speech during his 1995 campaign for governor. Yeah, he's not going to piss in a cup. That's what Gatewood says. I'm going to go piss in a cup. And you saw how that representative when... Um, Os Osif Monvi uh, asked him if he'd pee in a cup. You're a public official. You work for the government. You gonna piss in this cup? Why not? Why are you different than anybody else? You hypocrite. So um, there's no doubt that I'm an old hippie. So there it is. I'm an old hippie, and I certainly don't apologize to anybody for that. Certainly there are the people who came together to stop the slaughter in Vietnam, and I'm proud of that. Compared to Republican, I'll take hippie every time. In a 1990 interview with the Herald Leader. So he hated Republicans. Gatewood hated Republicans. Um, if I had known you could buy a Kentucky legislator for $200, marijuana would have been legal a long time ago. <laughs> so in 1992, the Bob Trop uh, affair, the Bob Trop uh, incident, Operation Bob Trop by the FBI was uh, surveilling Kentucky legislators, and they were taking like small amounts from lobbyists, including some $100 or $200 bribes. Um, from the horsing industry, uh, at least that they, the ones that they had got caught for, and that was a, a, a big stain on Kentucky since a lot of legislators were selling out for only $100, which is ridiculous. Why was it such a paltry amount that they're going to sell the entire legislator seat? What, you got $100? Yeah, I'll take $100. I'll vote the way you want to vote. 
That's crazy. That means I'm we're a corrupt state. We're our politics are the damnedest here in Kentucky. In this day and age, when the Democrat and the so-called Commonwealth, they say it's a Commonwealth where the wealth is supposed to be common. It's not a Commonwealth. The coal is King Coal's. It's a private corporation that it's not given to the people. LG&E bill continues to go up. LG&E is uh, spreading toxins with their coal ash ponds. And they're spreading coal ash in the little babies' faces and making them catch cancer. What is any of our elected officials going to do anything about that? Is any of our elected officials going to stand up for it? Hell, the Republicans right now in office are saying that it's the EPA, so we need less regulations. The coal companies need to be allowed to pollute more. That's Mitch McConnell's stance. That's Hal Rogers' stance. That's all the fucking Republicans in the city council's stance. They don't give a fuck about your health. They don't care about you. They only care about making the money at any, by any means necessary. Screw whoever you got to screw over in order to make some money. And if you have any idea about property rights, okay, do whatever you want to your property, but why you got to be spitting coal ash... Uh, over into my house, why you got to be putting arsenic and uh, all these mercury and uh, poisonous toxics, uh, toxins into the air uh, into my children's brains, making them get cancer. That's some bullshit, King Cole. That's some bullshit, LG&E. And LG&E owned by a European, so we're giving all of our money to some German CEO. So we're giving money to Germany. We're not even keeping the money here for ourselves, the Commonwealth. It's not the fucking commonwealth. It ain't never been the commonwealth. In this day and age where the Democrat and Republican parties are no longer the voice of Main Street but the puppets of Wall Street, it is natural that a third party should appear to champion the traditional conservative proposition that the Constitution is the blueprint for the operation of the government of the United States. So in a stump speech during his 2000 congressional race. So he criticized equally both Democrats and the Republicans. And I bet he actually probably got more bullshit from the Democrats, just like Nader, just like any progressive does. The Democrats want to act like Republicans, pretend that they have better morals, and then not actually speak about uh, our interests that we actually care about, like Obama. Candidate Obama is more progressive than President Obama today. He's actually running to the middle, so he's not even worried about the progressive base. Um. So that's uh, some Gatewood uh, quotes to get us started, right? A um, couple comments I wanted to make before I mentioned about the uh, lg e coal ash pond. Uh, they are ca causing cancer. lg e is here in Louisville, Kentucky, has a coal ash pond, which um, is uh, losing, you know, in all sorts of ways. It's polluting. It's causing cancer. They're not doing anything about it. They just got fined uh, $46,000, which is a slap on the wrist for this multi, uh, for this, uh, I guess, multinational corporation since they're in Germany. Um, so I had, uh, I, I forgot to mention that there was another coal pond in Gent, Kentucky, in, uh, on the border of Carroll and Gouts County. They're building a brand new one. That's Kentucky Utilities, but they could be leasing it out and getting everybody's trash. So if LG&E cuts their coal pond, they might be sending all their uh, shit up north to the rural counties. Uh, to allow some poor rural county that don't know shit to take all their pollution and all the pollutants and all the arsenic and the mercury. Um, also, I had a, had a, a guy uh, that I was talking to that uh, was sitting there telling me about, you know, asking me about what I did with Occupy, but really was uh, jealous or offended or wanted to, like, trying to uh, make it seem like I wasn't doing anything and, like, I realized the futility of the actions that I've done so far. Um, but I wasn't saying that I've done accomplished a lot. I just said that I was a part of it, and he was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, what are you doing? Just sleeping in a tent? You ain't gonna, you know, solve nothing doing like that. You know, what you want to do? Change the system? Is that what you want to try to do? Change the system? So I'm like, I don't know, fuck him, right? Fuck that guy. But, like, he's being a dick about something, uh, about the revolution. So that's great when you talk to your kids about where you were during the revolutionary year, 2012. Because uh, 2012 is going to be American Revolution. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Uh, v for Vendetta. 5th of November falls one day before Election Day. It's almost inevitable. It's going to happen. Louisville needs to get out on the streets. They need to be regulated. Be on your best behavior. Uh, no violence. No law breaking. No breaking windows. Get out peacefully. Demonstrate for up to a week. I think as soon as November 1st starts, we should be out there demonstrating out there on the street, taking over the streets, taking over Jefferson Square, that's Tahir Square, that's our square, 
Uh, Mayor Fisher, you want to sit there and say Founders Square is the quarters companies for a dollar for 99 years? You're going to sell your fucking public park spaces? And you only have the deed. You only have a deed to sell this damn shit. But you're going to sell it out to the corporation for a fucking dollar for 99 years. But you ain't going to allow Occupy people to protest the economic inequality and the uh, high amount of homeless people here in Louisville. 10,000 homeless people, Mayor Fisher. You got, you got at least three Fishervilles, three tent cities that I know of. At least three. And talks of several more. And actually, frankly, the less I know about them, the better, because I don't want to know about them. Homeless people stay hidden. You now have a law that makes you living under a bridge that could be considered camping, and they could kick you out. So if you're homeless and you're sleeping on a public park or a public bench, now you're illegal. And the law, you know, is equal to everybody, right? So it goes after all the rich people who are sleeping on a bench and sleeping out under the bridge. And it's going after the poor people as well. So uh, the rule of law is nice and even, right? Yeah, ba fam goo to you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's some bullshit going on here. Um, progressives, I believe it is perfect. Oh, my God, Kentucky is a perfect state for a W.E.B. Du Bois uh, uh, third-party electoral strategy. Just be like W.E.B. Du Bois and don't vote for Obama or uh, Mitt Romney. And I'll tell you why. Because it's basically, we're an irrelevant state. We're a safe state. So the swing states, there's about 15 swing states that are important um, because those could go either way and they got electoral votes. But Kentucky is safely Republican, safely for Mitt Romney. It's not going to be a chance. So neither Mitt Romney nor Obama is going to spend one second to campaign here. Romney's already got it, so he ain't going to spend any time. Obama's not going to try, so Kentucky, once more, is irrelevant in the election. Ohio's important. Florida's important. California's important. Kentucky, once again, is electorally insignificant, just like they are every election. Every election for the last 50 years, I'm sure, they've been electoral insignificant. So, let's see. There's an article here, uh, Courier Journal, James R. Carroll, July 15, 2012. So, watching the election, watching the uh, Obama versus Romney election, this guy is saying, is like uh, James Carroll, is watching other people going in and out of a party, and you get to hear the music and the laughter, and you know that outside the gate is as close as you'll ever get. So, in Kentucky, we're spectators. Welcome to the 2012 presidential campaign, Kentucky. President Barack Obama is scheduled to touch down in the Commonwealth on Monday, but he's just using the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport to get into a more important state neighboring Ohio. So Kentucky flew into, uh, Obama flew into Kentucky to get to Cincinnati. That was uh, why Obama come to Kentucky. So get used to this. To paraphrase Tina Fey, Kentucky, you will be able to see the election from your house. Obama and his Republican opponent, Mitt Romney, are going to be in Ohio so much between now and November they will qualify for the state's driver's license. Ohio is a swing state. It's elect uh, 18 electoral votes are so important on the map to victory in both candidates' campaigns that Ohio is likely to see more of Obama and Romney than almost any other state. The man who wins Ohio wins the White House. Analysts generally agree. So, as Ohio goes, so goes the nation, right? That's what Hillary said. But Hillary didn't become president, so maybe that's, uh, that wisdom is thrown out the door. Uh, but it's still a swing state. They're going to spend resources and money there. So, with the uh, itineraries of the president, the former Massachusetts governor calls for visits to southwestern Ohio, more likely... Then not, their campaign plans will be using the runways in Hebron, Kentucky. But look fast before Obama and Romney get across the Ohio River and go into that closed party over there in the Buckeye State. To hear the laughter and the music and the dissonance and anger, Kentuckians close to Ohio can catch it all on television. Gobs of campaign ads aimed not at the Bluegrass State, but at the state whose first name has become critical. Residents in eastern Kentucky can peer over the gate at a similar party next door in Virginia. Another major swing state. So Ohio and Virginia are swing states. Ohio and Virginia, which are two bordering states of Kentucky, are uh, figuring out you know, how to be relevant since they're a swing state. So Romney and Obama are going to spend resources. They're going to spend ads. They're going to try to get the voters in Ohio and the voters in Virginia to vote for them, and they're not going to do the same for Kentucky. They'll probably run a couple ads, and that's all you'll see of them. They might make one or two stops. But no serious effort will be made here in Kentucky. So it makes it a safe state to vote for a third party. They don't give a fuck about our votes anyways. We should hold our votes back and make it more valuable. And if they don't give us what we want, if they're not as progressive as we want, then we don't give them our vote. We vote for Jill Stein, uh, the Green Party candidate. She's won the nomination. She is a, a progressive. She's a doctor. She's got a soccer mom face. 
Um, and she's a radical. She's been endorsed by Noam Chomsky. Um, and she's green, so she's a green party. So I think that's a good strategy from which we can win. Um, so, so more about the third party independent electoral strategy going on here in Kentucky. Don't fucking vote for a Romney or Obama. They ain't going to fucking do a damn thing for you. Vote for Jill Stein or some other third party candidate. Vote for yourself. At least when you vote for somebody you want and you don't win, um, you're not disappointed. But when you vote for somebody that you don't want and they win, is that really what you wanted? So, Kentucky, vote Jill Stein, Green Party 2012. Viva la Revolucion.